Welcome to a detailed overview of blocks in WordPress and how to use them. Whether you've never built anything in WordPress at all, or you're familiar with WordPress but never used the block editor, this is going to be the video for you. We're going to start with important terminology and work our way through the fundamentals of working with the block editor so that you feel comfortable building real sites and editing real pages with it. If you want to be notified when I release new content, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube or click the link in the video description to be taken to my site where you can sign up for my email list. I share new tutorials as well as specific deals and promotions that are going on across WordPress to my email list. When you're interacting with modern WordPress, you're gonna hear the terms Gutenberg and blocks a lot. Gutenberg specifically is the editing interface that was introduced to WordPress in 2018. And blocks are the actual elements used to build your pages. You'll hear them used interchangeably, but I'm gonna to try to be really specific in this video and use the proper terminology. Blocks that you would use to build your page are elements like headings, text, buttons, and image elements. When people refer to Gutenberg, they're typically referring to what's properly known as the block editor. And you'll see that whenever you're editing a page or a post. The old style, which people typically call classic editor, uses a function called tinyMCE, which will look fairly familiar in a lot of other basic word processing tools across the internet. Things like forums and other CMSs like Drupal use tinyMCE for a long time. Another important term you're gonna hear is core. And when people say core, they're referring to the basic vanilla installation of WordPress with no additional plugins and themes. So you might hear somebody say, oh, well that's in core or that should be in core. What they mean is native WordPress and the block editor with no additional add-ons installed. So now when you hear other tutorials or read things online, you're gonna know what Gutenberg, blocks, and core all mean. One key thing you need to decide upfront when using the block editor is whether this is going to be the right fit for you or not. I would argue from the outset that it is for a number of reasons, but there are cons just like there are to using every approach in WordPress to building your site. Some of the pros to building your site in the block editor are that first of all, you're closer to WordPress core. Page builders come and go, but the idea for me of being closer to core is good because that should help benefit you in terms of long-term stability with your site. Another key thing is that there is no denying the WordPress block editor is extremely fast. Its loading performance is both stellar on the back end and the front end. The other amazing thing about the block editor is that it can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. So if you're an agency building sites for clients, you can really lock it down and only give them specific abilities to edit content on the page. Or if you're somebody that wants to do some crazy custom dynamic site, you can absolutely achieve that as well. How do I know? Because I've done both and I've built both for clients. The cons to building in the block editor vary based on your experience and your personal preferences, but in general, you're gonna find people say that the core blocks are extremely limited, which is true. You're gonna to need to add an additional block package, and we're gonna cover that more in detail later in this video. Another thing is that workflow changes coming from a page builder like Elementor or Bricks or something like that can feel a little bit jarring, but once you spend some time with it, just like anything, of course, you're gonna get faster and more efficient with it. Another con is that the block editor is developing rapidly in some ways and really not developing at all in other ways. So you might find some frustrating limitations with the block editor, but typically there is a way around it or just another way to reframe it. So you're just gonna have to kind of accept the fact that it's moving really rapidly and also not so rapidly in other ways. Ultimately for me, the decision comes down to long-term stability and building custom tailored experiences for my clients. And the block editor allows me to do that all while having an extremely performance site right out of the box. Performance is great, editability and customization is all really great, so it's got the perfect balance of all the things we've kind of discussed at this point. I spent many years with page builders such as Oxygen and WP Bakery, but for me, Blocks has been a great fit for both my personal sites and my client projects. One of the first decisions you're going to need to make when working with the block editor is deciding what block package you wanna add on top of WordPress core. This is essentially just a WordPress plugin that extends the functionality and the features, as well as the types of blocks available to you. WordPress core blocks are extremely basic like I've already mentioned and leave a lot to be desired when it comes to styling and layout controls. So a block package is really gonna help you enhance your experience. There are a bunch of both free and paid block packages and my personal favorite is called Generate Blocks. The free version is extremely capable, but there are many other block packages out there like Cadence, Stackable, Greenshift, and many, many more. Any block package you choose is going to have a different philosophy. 
I personally chose generate blocks despite it having the fewest blocks as compared to things like cadence and stackable. And it's really because it allows me to build almost anything with the basic six blocks that are included with generate blocks free. I don't want all the extra clutter that comes with a bunch of pre-built blocks, things like info boxes and cards and hero sections. Any pre-built section like that, I can create really easily with just a simple selection of blocks from generate blocks, such as a headline, an image, and a grid. And I pretty much have all of those available to me with just those three elements. Because of this approach, I really don't want my block package to add a bunch of extra junk and pre-built blocks that I'm never gonna use anyway. With that said, if you're the type of person that does like pre-built blocks, you might wanna consider cadence or stackable over something like generate blocks. It is possible to install more than one block package on your site, but I would strongly recommend against that because they all integrate in different ways. They're gonna have some features that tie together and some that don't. So it's really ideal to really stick to one block package per site. Another consideration is that with things like generate blocks and cadence, there are themes built by those developers that integrate perfectly with those block packages. So like for me, I use generate press as my theme and generate blocks as the block package. In the case of Cadence, the plugin is called Cadence and the theme is also called Cadence. So those tie together really nicely because of course they're designed to. In just a little bit, I'm gonna show you what it's like to work with the block editor in detail and install both Generate Press and Generate Blocks. Once you've decided what block package is right for you, we're gonna start by installing the plugin. So in your WordPress admin dashboard, hover over plugins and click add new. We're gonna type generate blocks into our search bar and press enter, and then you'll see the plugin and we'll click install. Then after a moment, we can also click on activate. Now that we have that plugin installed, I'm gonna hover over appearance, click on themes, and in the back end here, you can see I have the default 2023 WordPress theme installed, which will work perfectly fine with generate blocks, but not as seamlessly as generate press will as our theme. So again, you're not required to use generate press, but as compared to the default WordPress theme or any other random theme off the repo, it's gonna be far more flexible and look way better out of the box. So let's go ahead and click on add new, search for generate press, and then we're going to install and activate that theme. With this block plugin installed and our theme active, we're now really ready to dig into the interface and how to work with blocks. At this point, the most likely place you wanna start is by editing your homepage. Let's go ahead and begin there. So I'm gonna click on the pages button in our admin sidebar and then click on home. If you don't have that, of course, just go ahead and add a new page. Once the interface is loaded, it can feel a little overwhelming because you're presented with a blank white screen, but well, let's go ahead and make it easy by covering the key interface areas you're gonna interact with regularly. So take a look in the upper left corner to start off with. The blue plus button allows you to see all the available blocks in your site, and you can add those to the page. At the very top of this list are the blocks that come with generate blocks, which are denoted with these little blue icons. Anything with black text is from WordPress core blocks. Let's go ahead and click on the container, and now we can see that that block is added to our page. The next icon worth mentioning is the back arrow, which is simply just undo, and the button next to it is redo. And these steps are really granular, so if you make a mistake, you can use that button, or even just use Control Z on your keyboard to undo like you'd expect with a Word doc. Lastly here, you'll see this icon with three lines, which is called Document Overview, and in other WordPress builders, it's referred to as the Structure Panel. I click this icon pretty much immediately when I load into the block editor because it's extremely helpful and it's the fastest way to navigate around your page as the layouts get more and more complex. As of now, we can only see our container in the document overview, but if we click the little black add block button inside our container, you can see a search field and some commonly used blocks appear for you to pick from. Go ahead and choose headline and you can see that the headline is now nested inside the container. And that's also reflected in our document overview panel on the left side of the page. The next crucial area to pay attention to is your right sidebar, which is called the settings panel. There are two tabs inside the settings panel. One is called page and one is called blocks. The page tab has a ton of settings related to the page you're currently working on. And this allows you to perform things like modify publish dates, set visibility, change featured image, and so on. The options here are gonna change dramatically based on what plugins you have installed and whether you're editing a post or a page. The second tab on this settings panel is the block tab. This one is really important and you're gonna spend a lot of time here because this allows you to manipulate the styling of the block you're currently editing. We're gonna cover more on this in just a little bit. I generally don't use the blue and the black add block buttons because there's an easier way to add blocks to your page. When you have a block selected, you can simply press the return key on your keyboard, which jumps to a new line, similar to a word processor. Now press a forward slash and start typing the name of the block you want. Let's just type the word grid, which is going to filter down to our generate blocks grid block. Press return again and that grid's gonna be added to your page. And as you can see, there's a few further options now, so I'm just gonna choose the three container layout here. 
So there's really no right way or wrong way to add blocks to your page, but I personally find this way the most convenient and non-disruptive way is to go about it using this slash approach I just showed you. Every once in a while, the return key and the slash approach is not going to work for you because of layout and overflow issues. So a great way to get around this is inside our document overview panel, we can select a block and you can see the three little dots appear here. Click that and there's a variety of options that appear and all of them are fairly straightforward. We can go ahead and click insert before which positions your cursor above that block. And then you can then use the black add block button or the slash approach, whichever you prefer. This same approach applies for the insert after as well. You'll notice that when you click insert before or after the document overview shows a paragraph element, which is a core block. This is because you can start typing anything you want immediately in here. If you wanted to just add some paragraph text, you can just slap it right in. But I really only do this if I know for a fact I'm not going to adjust this text and I just wanted to pick up my default body text styling. I use this insert before and after functionality a lot and I'm sure you will too. Let's go ahead and type something into this headline element such as pineapple on pizza question mark. And now in our block tab on the right, we can adjust any of the styling we want. You might wonder where the default styling has come from and that's inside of our theme generate press. Let me know in the comments below if you want a beginner's guide to generate press and theme styles. Now let's go ahead and set this heading to have an uppercase text transform as well as a font size of five rem. As you can see, this headline block is changing in real time. And now let's say we want to adjust the styling of our container element. All we need to do is either click the element itself in the middle of the editor or select it from the document overview. Sometimes clicking on the element is not really possible. So the document overview is a good fallback. And that's why I mentioned I opened it right away pretty much every time I load into the block editor. Now that we have our container selected, I'm going to go ahead and give it an off-white background color and padding of two RAM on all sides. Once again, our styling is changing real time on the page here. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and click the blue publish or update button in the upper right of your page. You'll see this little black snack bar pop up in the lower left to confirm the page was updated successfully with a view page link. If you miss that and the snack bar disappears, you can always click the open in new page icon directly next to the blue update button here as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the page on the front end and we can see our styling changes have taken effect exactly as we intended. In Generate Blocks, there are two primary blocks that you're going to use to create layouts such as column sidebars, and that's either going to be the grid block itself or you can create your own using containers nested inside of other containers. This topic can become complex quite quickly, so for basic layouts, it's really common to use the grid block. If you want to use containers, you have more flexibility, but it does take a bit more work, so we'll have to cover that in a different tutorial. When we create a layout using a grid block, it's essentially just a container which has multiple additional containers nested underneath it. And we have the ability to control the width of each of those inner containers to create the layout we need. If you want to put four images side by side, that's easy. Just add a grid to the page with slash grid, then click the visual representation of a four column layout. And this sets each inner container to a width of 25%. Now we can add an image block inside and remember to click the blue icon, which is the generate blocks image block. And that's a lot more customizable than the core one. You can upload a new image, grab one out of your media library and so on. Then if I wanted, I could go ahead and press enter on my keyboard, then type slash headline to add a headline to my grid column. Inside your document overview panel, you can see all the blocks we added, which are now visible and we can click to select those. Let's change the width of this first grid container, which we can easily do by selecting the container inside of the grid block, then in the block panel on the right, changing it to one of the common presets like 33% or 50%. And as you can see, we can get a really, really long way, even with just the basic six blocks that Generate Blocks offers us. There's a few quality of life tips you're gonna to wanna to know when you're working in the block editor. First of all, in our document overview panel, we can drag and drop blocks anywhere we want. If I wanted to get my headline out of this container, for instance, all I have to do is click and hold, drag it to where I want, and then let go. You can also hold shift and click multiple elements to perform that same drag and drop operation or perform styling changes to all of the blocks you have selected at once. Sometimes drag and drop is a little bit clunky, so you can rearrange a block by clicking it, and then you'll notice this little up and down arrow, which will move the element up and down in the document overview accordingly. Lastly, a bunch of the common keyboard shortcuts you'd work expect like Control S for save, undo and redo like we talked about. And you can also delete a single block or multiple blocks at once with the delete shortcut, which is Control Option Z or Control Alt Z. 
So with all of this in mind, we've covered a ton of ground. You should feel much more comfortable with the Gutenberg editor. I always tell clients it's easier to edit than it is to create something from the ground up. So don't try to make it perfect the first time. I promise you're gonna get it wrong and you're gonna learn a lot. So just do it once and try it a few more times. You're just gonna get better every single time you do it. If you have any additional questions, please do drop them in the comments below or reach out to me directly. As I've already mentioned, if you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.